Professor Pabuka, uh, representing the good people of Kazana North uh, Senatorial District of Kazana State. Okay. We watched uh, the deliberation on the uh, socioeconomic development and stability, kind of a financial inclusion. Can you throw more light on that bill and on that motion? Oh, okay, okay, on financial uh, yes. exclusion. Yes, thank you. You see, yeah, you see, the, the point is. Uh, in any society, uh, you will have a group of people that are generally not participating in the national economy. Unfortunately, most of our people, or well, most of the people I represent, are not financially included in the activity, financial uh, services of the nation. What I mean here is that I represent 12 local governments, and of these 12, only two have banks. So which means the remaining 10 have no access to financial services. They do not actually get any credit, do not transact any business with the banks. Which means, as far as they are concerned, it's like the whole Nigerian government or system doesn't actually exist. Because if you don't have access to, to banking system, if you don't have access to credit, how can you get out of poverty? That is the essence of... Uh, or the motion that we have moved at the floor of the Senate today, that for the sake of uh, having social economic development in our areas, it is important that the central bank, the, the government, and all other financial institutions must come together and find a way that we, these people that are disadvantaged are actually given access to financial services. And luckily, in this globalized uh, world where telecommunication is, is available everywhere you go. In all the 774 local governments of this country, you discover that somebody somewhere in each local government has a telephone, a cell phone that he can communicate. So, which means if we're really serious, we can provide financial services to these people. Particularly if we look at our own, uh, the system we used to for, let's say the postal order issue. Today, in all the local governments, we have a post office. There's nothing that stops us from actually going back to look at these things and see how you can provide you know, financial services to everybody and everywhere you are in this country. You can have access to that by mobile by banking or mobile financial services. And also, if you look at the, uh, the issue of uh, the, the getting to recharge, for instance, your, your telephone line or cell phone, you get, you are, you are actually doing a financial transaction. So, which means if really these things are looked at, very little cost can actually, uh, with that little cost, it can actually meet the demand for these people. I also mentioned that we have about four markets that every week, you know, they transact almost a billion naira worth of uh, trade. And yet these people have no access to financial services. I mean, it doesn't make sense. We say we want to do a cashless economy. How can you do cashless economy when 60% of your population don't have a bank account. So this is really the import of the, of the motion that, no, if we really want to get out of poverty, then we must be able to get financial services at affordable cost to our people, and especially the people living in the rural areas. Yeah. See, it was uh, actually launched on 2nd of October 2012. Yes. And uh, how do we look at the response mechanism? Because each time the government put policy on ground. The targeted audience are not even aware that they are <laughs> such that he dies on the river. Thank you very much. So it means that's why the motion says there is very poor planning, there is very poor uh, you know, awareness uh, campaign. And uh, before you do any policy, you must first of all design the strategy for its implementation. Okay. If you don't plan for that, you are planning for failure. And this is clearly what we are seeing. There are many programs, for instance, that uh, we had People's Bank. You know, we have uh, the microfinance that are around now. You know, we have community banks. All these have failed. Why? You see, the problem is that we have a lot of uh, uh, lack of monitoring and evaluation. I always come with this one because if you have a policy that you want to reach the rural communities, I, you are discovering that it doesn't work. If you do an evaluation, you will know whether it's working or not. But if you actually now evaluate properly, you would find uh, where the faults are. 
and then you'll be able to correct, and that policy will move forward. Unfortunately, when we start something and then it fails, then we leave it at that. We used to have what we call marketing boards. Those were corrupted and they failed, then they were phased out. Today, you know, if you are an ordinary farmer, first, like I say, you don't have access to financing, and secondly, even when you produce, you don't know where to sell. And because you have a lot of, of family needs, you actually sell your product the time when the products are the cheapest. You understand? But if we have an, a commodity market, for instance, an agricultural development a commodity market, which will actually supplement or ensure the payments of agricultural credit schemes that the government have been launching, that way you can get these farmers to have a guaranteed price. If the government says, okay, at the end of the, end of the, uh, the farming season, your products, let's say you have produced rice, if the government will give you a minimum guaranteed price, you can sell it to government at the end of it. At least you will be able to make some profit. And not that you now sell it to somebody who has money back. You will buy it when it is cheapest and he will store it and you will sell it when it is expensive. And at that time, those people that actually produce these uh, crops will also come to the market to buy at a very high rate. This is not fair. This is not a fair system. And so long as we do not address this, we will never have social equity. And the whole essence of government is to bring about social equity. It's not about just the survival of the fittest. You know, our system has been that you actually look at the people that are vulnerable and you take care of them within society. That's the import of what we have said that. I think these systems are not working because they were never designed properly in the first place. We had billions of naira that were issued by Central Bank over the years, and yet no peasant farmer have had access to this amount of money because he should bring a collateral. What kind of collateral? Unless it's carrying him or her, it's a collateral. I don't see how anybody in the rural areas will give you. And if he tells you, take my piece of farm, he doesn't have any paper on it. I mean, so, so there are many things that we must address socially so that we can look inwards. The problem we have is that in most cases, we tend to look at what happens in America or in Europe. Yeah. When we are not living in Europe, when our people are not living, they don't even know what Europe is all about. In fact, those who are living in rural areas have no idea, those in Abuja, how they live or in Lagos. They only see it on television. If they at all, they happen to find the television. These are the social issues that we must address you know, as government. And that is why uh, you know, the, the, the motion is requesting for the government and all those that are involved, please come together and get us out of this mess that we are in. Uh, finally, for me, uh, so looking at the, the central bank of the UAR, which is the apex bank that could ensure implementation of uh, its policies, it seems that uh, they are lukewarm or they sometimes are not willing to consciously push their policies to the people. Don't you think there is a a gap in between what is doing and the... You see, in the first place, before you make a policy, yeah. you have to consult with the people yeah, yeah, yeah. so that you understand what are the issues. In these days, you find that anybody that wants to make, any institution wants to make policy, you just sit down in the office somewhere and assume you know what is wrong with the issues. And you assume that people, what they like. This is why we say development can never take place correctly if you do it up, down. It has to be, you know, from down, up. So the policies, before they are formulated, you must look at elements of the policy. You go down to the stakeholders and, and ask, ask them what they want. How can we make uh, this year a local or peasant farming better? What are the issues? What is worrying you? From there, you begin to know the issues. You begin to know and develop how you can solve their problem. Sometimes you say, OK, we buy tractors. OK, when you buy a tractor, there are places where those tractors will not work. Or in fact, you find that it's a small holding. If you want them to benefit from anything, the first thing you understand their problems, and then you can objectively understand from other, uh, if you like, uh, good practices all over the world, then you can improve. We are not reinventing anything. It's just that we are, I think we are not looking inwards, and we are also not contacting the stakeholders. And so perhaps that is why the policies have never worked, because those that made them in an air conditioned office like this uh, don't know really what are the issues. And then, is it practical? You can propose something that you want to do. Maybe you copy it from America or somewhere, but you cannot even get access to where these people are. Or you don't even know where they are or what the condition they live in. So I think uh, it is important that we know 
what is required before we actually design the program for the people. Carry them along in the, in the design and implementation of the program, and we can succeed. Yes, see, that most of these uh, commercial banks, the, their usual complaint is that the cost of operation, they look like they are still high, and there are no, there are no people who organize the cost of no, no, no unemployment or no people who wash the cost of everything. But not only that, don't I only help more through your own committee in the sense that power, communication are essential in reducing the cost of operation in the rural areas, as well as if we guarantee from central bank to the banks. I see decreasing the liquidity ratio for those who are operating in who are operating in rural areas so that we can have we can have synergy to be able to reduce the things. You see, it's a good one you put, but you see the problem I see, the way I see it, that our banks have lost ideas. The products that they have are products that are meant for the elites. They were never designed for people in the rural areas. So, in fact, they cannot benefit from them. If you travel worldwide, you see branch of a, of a bank. We have only four or five people there. And it's a small corner shop at the, on the street. Here, each bank wants to have a large building, wants to have the cost of running it actually is the overhead. And today we have, a, a, what do you call it, ATM. If you provide ATM in rural communities with a solar system, you can actually eliminate the cost of labor. But nobody is looking at these avenues, you know, because you mean if you go to a police station and you establish an ATM, tell me what you, what is the issue there? You can actually go and recharge uh, the, you can refine it, you can put the money there and take money. Nothing stops us from looking at it that way. Or you go to somewhere where it's a, it's a social place in the community, you put it there and it will, it will serve them. You, you understand what I mean? So there are overheads that are too much. That's why the banks are not actually going there. And secondly, if you need access to credit, there are many ways that you can actually start. You don't have to be there physically. In today, in order to get something. Like I said, the mobile system, we have there are a lot of software in the mobile telephones that you can actually use to subtract. Most people make their payments on, on, online. So you can tell me that uh, anybody who knows how to use the telephone, at least his son or her son or, or his daughter, can actually do the operation, some of the operation for them. And of course, we also need to put them into cooperative societies, like I said. But there are ways that the government will have to support so that the banks can come out with different products. It's not about an issue of just the banks asking uh, their employees, you must get X amount of uh, deposit before you even maintain your own uh, job. This is what it has become to. Very few products from the banks. Whereas really, if there is a, a guarantee scheme with the government, banks can do much more. So I think the CBN also has its own responsibility. You know, you don't even know, for instance, now, you don't know which services the bank is the CBN is giving. What are the schemes? For instance, the agri-currency scheme, there may be others. Unless and until they have a way of communicating, then we will never know. But if it is also not their own, they are not supposed to do that, then create those uh, agencies that will handle these things. Or work with the banks to find something that actually is workable. Like I said, the, the government came out with People's Bank and it failed. Yes. Nobody evaluated why it failed. Yes. You, you understand? So, but if we really are serious, we can bring back these things and they will work for us. The example I'm giving is still this, uh, the Burning KB, the, the KB State uh, you know, rice production that was just experienced, which uh, the civilian governor was telling us, it's a success story. So if it is a success, then why has it succeeded? Because if this is the first time something small is succeeding, before you scale it, you have to find out what are the issues, what are the threats and the strengths. If you really want to scale uh, the SWOT analysis of this, they are all having these ideas, but why is it that it's not working? This is the job of the government, and I believe also that the National Assembly will live up to these uh, responsibilities to draw attention, and that is clearly why we have drawn attention to the flight of our people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.